In this video, we are going to add and subtract with square roots. So before we begin, please take a minute to fill in the chart that you see on the screen. So here you'll see that in this first column, we have the square root of two different numbers being added. And then we have two separate columns. Here we have a column where we've taken those two numbers, added them together, and placed them underneath the square root. And here we have a column where we've instead written something like 2 square roots of 3 or 5 square roots of 5. So notice that these on the right hand side have a coefficient and these do not. So take a minute and fill those in. So now that we've got this chart filled in, let's take a look at it for a second. And if I look at the different colored columns, what I ultimately notice is that this column here in red has the same values as this column here in green. And the blue column is different. So what this is first telling me is that adding square roots is not as simple as just adding the numbers underneath the square root. Because the square root of 3 plus the square root of 3 is not the square root of 6. And the square root of 7 plus the square root of 6 is not just the square root of 13. So we can't just add those numbers under the square root. That is not something that we can do. However, if I take a closer look at this, what I notice is that here I have two square roots of 3. So what that's telling me here, I have two square roots of 3, they kind of work like variables. So if this said x plus x, I would write 2x. So here it says the square root of 3 plus the square root of 3, and I have two of them being added together. Then here I have a square root of 5 plus square root of 5. I have two of them being added together. 3 square roots of 5 plus 2 square roots of 5. Again, working like variables, we have 3 of them plus 2 of them for a total of 5. And then here, 4 square roots of 6 minus 2 square roots of 6 for a total of 2. So instead of just adding the numbers underneath the square roots, we treat these a lot like like terms. We can only combine together like square roots, and we're simply stating how many we have. So upon first look here, what we notice is we have negative 3 square roots of 12 plus 7 square roots of 27 plus 2 square roots of 45. And I now know that adding or subtracting square roots is a lot like combining like terms. And so I'm looking for like square root parts. And the problem is here that all three of these square roots are different. But what we always need to remember to do is we always need to remember to take a look at those square roots and decide if these square roots are in fact fully simplified. And what I notice about 12, 27, and 45 is that these square roots are in fact not simplified. So before I try to add and subtract them together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on them one at a time and focus on simplifying them first. So here I have a coefficient of negative 3, and if I look at 12 and I think about all of my perfect squares, what I notice about 12 is that 12 is divisible by 4. So here I'm going to split 12 into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Well, the square root of 4 can be rewritten as 2. So this is really negative 3 times a regular 2 times the square root of 3, which then combine together to be negative 6 square root of 3. And then from here, I'm going to focus on this one with the square root of 27. And I notice with 27 that 27 is divisible by 9. So here I rewrite this as 7 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. So this becomes 7 times the square root of 9 is just 3. So I have a plus sign here. 7 times 3 is 21 square roots of 3. And then here I focus on the one in green. So I notice here I have the square root of 45, which is also divisible by 9. So here I split this up and I get 2 square roots of 9, square roots of 5. The square root of 9 can be rewritten as just 3 with no square root. So here if I bring my plus sign down, I have plus 6 
square roots of 5. So now that these are fully simplified, what I notice is that two of these have like square root parts. So the negative 6 times the square root of 3 and the 21 times the square root of 3 have these like square root parts. So what I can do here is I can combine them together just like I would combine like terms. So here I notice I have a coefficient of negative 6 and a coefficient of 21. If I add those together, I have 15 square roots of 3. And then this last one here is not a like square root, so it can't be combined further. So we just have 6 times the square root of 5. And there we leave it. So since these don't have like square root parts, I cannot simplify this any further. So let's work through three more examples here together. So I look at this first one and I notice that I have the square root of 48. And I know that 48 is divisible by a number of perfect squares, the biggest of which is 16. So I'm going to rewrite 48 as the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. The square root of 16 is 4, so I have 4 square roots of 3. And then I look at 75, and I know that 75 is divisible by the perfect square of 25. So here I put my plus sign in between. I then rewrite this as the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. The square root of 25 is 5, so I have 5 times the square root of 3. Then from here, I notice that these two have matching square root parts. So I can treat them like like terms, and I can actually combine them together to be 4 plus 5, which is 9, times the square root of 3. So we have 9 square roots of 3 total. Then if I look at my next problem here, what I notice is I have some square roots that are not perfectly simplified. The first one I notice is 12. I know that 12 is divisible by 4. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And then here I know that that square root of 4 can be rewritten as 2. So this is really 6 times the square root of 3. And then I move on and I look at the next one and I notice that I have the square root of 27, which is divisible by the perfect square of 9. So I rewrite 27 as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. The square root of 9 is 3. So I simply can add that together as 3 square root of 3. Then this last one here doesn't need to be rewritten. We just have negative 2 times the square root of 6. And 6 is fully simplified. So then from here, I'm looking for like square root parts that I can combine together. And what I notice here is that I have a square root of 3 and a square root of 3. So I can actually combine those together to be 6 plus 3, which is 9 square root of 3. And then I leave this last part on, minus 2 square root of 6. Since those do not have like square root parts, I can't add them together any further. Then finally here in this last one I have three square roots again. I notice that the 5 is fully simplified, so I'm going to leave that alone. But I notice that the 20 is not. 20 is divisible by the perfect square of 4. So here I'm going to start simplifying this. So I have 6 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. So then here I have 6 square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 5. And then here I have 12 square root of 5. Then I'm going to add on that original number there so that I don't forget it at the beginning. And then here I also know that I need to rewrite the square root of 45. I know that 45 is divisible by the perfect square of 9. So I start rewriting this. I have minus 5 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. Minus 5 times, this becomes 3. Minus 15 square roots of 5. So what I really have left here is I have 2 square roots of 5 plus 12 square roots of 5. And then I can turn this into plus a negative 15 square roots of 5. And what I notice here is that all of these have a like square root part of the square root of 5. So all of these can be combined together. So if I start with the first two, I have 14 times the square root of 5 plus a negative 15 times the square root of 5. And then if I add those together, we end up with negative 1 square roots 
of five.